So why couldn't Geno Jennings cast this demon out? Well, it's simple. Geno Jennings is not a fake exorcist or part of the demon slayers or anything like that or whatever. And so Geno Jennings does not kind of purport to be that. However, I do think there's some issues with his doctrine so far. I won't, I won't get into that. But this video came to me about him, some, I guess, some sort of service on 31st, December 31st. For some reason, there's a lot of things happening on these December 31st services. But a young man comes up who, I guess, apparently has a demon. And the question is, why could not Geno Jennings cast this demon out? He spends a long time, and I mean a long time, with trying to get the demon out. And so the question is, why could he not do so? Well, I think the answer is pretty simple. We're going to look at it in a second. I want to just give a little, little video detail of what happened there so you can kind of see for yourself. And then we'll deal with why no demon was cast out. Everlasting God looked down upon his brothers, who asked you to give him deliverance from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. Satan... In the name of Jesus Christ, we bind you and rebuke you. We command this spirit to come out of him in the name of the Lord Jesus. Satan, we ask you to set this man free. Let this spirit come out of him. We bound you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, cast out everything and anything that is in him. That's contrary to your will. Satan, we bind you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of him. Come out of him in the name of the Lord Jesus. Satan, you a liar. I command you by the power of Jesus himself. I command this spirit to come out of him. Lord Jesus, him. set him free. Everlasting God, deliver him. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord God, set him free. Do you believe God? Yes. Do you believe God? Yes. Then Satan can't stay here. As long as you believe God, Satan can't stay here. Yes. Satan is a liar. Yes, devil is a liar. Hallelujah. Satan is a liar. I bound him in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hold your peace and come out of him. Hold your peace. Lord Jesus, set him free. Now this continued for quite a long time and there's conversation back and forth with the with the boy, not necessarily with the demon. I don't know if he's having a conversation with the demon or not, but with the boy and he's responding uh, to what Gino was saying. Now, I don't think, again, I don't think that Gino is part of some ruse where he is trying to have people come up and they fake or do anything like that or whatever. I don't think that's the case at all, but I think there's a problem here that one, Gino doesn't address. And I think even the imposters, either intentionally or unintentionally, they don't address at all. But we're going to look at the scriptures and we're going to see what the area is. But let's continue to see that, yes, after all of this, even still, the person left the same way he came. You can't have him. You can't have him. You can't have him. In the name of Jesus Christ. You can't have him. In the name of the Lord Jesus. You can't have him. In the name of Jesus Christ. Come out of him. Come out of him. Come out of him. Come out of him. He's a liar. He's a liar. He's a liar. He's a liar. Do you believe God? Believe what the word said. Resist him. And when you resist him, you don't let the devil have power over you. Yes. Do you understand? Yes. Yeah. Oh. Yes. Yes. You do understand, don't you? Yes. Yeah, I do. God is protecting me. He, he's giving me. He, he's, he's letting me resist the devil. So explain something to me. Yeah. You couldn't resist the devil when you was tearing up everything? At that moment, no. I was blanking out. The, remember, like, the sister when her eyeballs were popping out? Yes. It, it was doing that to me, too, at the level. It was doing that to me at the level. you're resisting him now, aren't you? Yeah. Yes. I don't want to hurt anyone. <laughs> I don't want to hurt anyone. Uh, you don't have to. I don't want to hurt myself either. The reason why I'm talking to you to see where you're at. Yes. And see where the devil at. Yeah. As long as you got awareness and freedom of thought. 
Yes, I do. He's able to call upon the name of the Lord. Yes. You can resist the devil. Yes. It's like, uh, Always remember that. Uh, uh, I don't care how much you shake you. I don't care how much you distort your face. I don't care how much you twist your neck. You have proven you can resist him. Yes. Like, uh, then do it. Yes. It's like, uh, do you understand me? Yes. Yeah. Do it. Take him to his seat. So they just sent him back to his seat. Nothing has changed. He's still having these issues, apparently. But Gino did kind of tap into something that I think is important, and this is where he should have been in the first place. So before I go there, why could he not cast the demon out? Well, it's simple. There was no demon. The reason why this is important, because this is going to be kind of the battle, one of the one of the central battles that we're going to have in the church, and that is whether a Christian, whether a believer who has the Holy Spirit can actually have a demon, not a person who's not a Christian. Can they have a demon? I think it's pretty subtle that that's the possibility that, that that possibility exists. But as far as a Christian, someone who has the Holy Spirit in them. No, I think that also is settled according to the scriptures. The problem is, though, too many people have been told that they have a demon. However, what does a person with a demon look like? Not like this young man. The demon does not voluntarily come to service, worship, enjoy the service, and then on command respond to the person who's going to exercise this demon out. Not one time in the Bible, not one time in the Bible does the person who is inhabited with a demon voluntarily want a demon out. We don't see that. What we do see is Jesus speak to or them speak to the actual demon. Not the person, but the demon. As a matter of fact, let's look at Jesus' description in Mark 9, 21. Notice what Jesus is saying. In 21, he says, he asked his father, how long has this been happening to him? And he said, from childhood, it has often thrown him into the fire and into the water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. Now, the point that I'm trying to get from here is that this is a repeated action. Demons don't just manifest on command. They don't just manifest, bam, at the drop of a dime or drop of a hat or when someone says a key word. A demon acts like a demon all of the time, whether inside or outside of a person. And so the person that would have a demon would constantly be acting, would constantly act that way. Think about Legion. What does the Bible tell us about Legion? The description of Legion, if we go to Mark chapter 5, uh, let's start in verse three. It says, and he had his dwelling among the tombs uh, and no one was able to bind him anymore, even with chains, uh, because he had often been bound with shackles and chains and his chains had been torn apart by him and the shackles were broken in pieces and no one was strong enough to subdue him. Constantly, night and day, he was screaming among the tombs and in the mountains and gashing himself with stones. And so this was his habit. He didn't act like a demon once Jesus showed up. He didn't act like a demon uh, on command. This was his pattern. And so you can tell, by the way, notice in the Bible, everyone knew if a person had a demon. When the people brought someone to Jesus who had a demon, they brought someone to Jesus who had a demon, meaning they knew the person had a demon. These were unbelievers, people who could see this person has an evil spirit, a demonic spirit uh, attacking them. And it was evident, not a person who is functionally okay, meaning they can go to work, they can do their job, they can take lunch breaks, go on trips and cruises and so forth, they can go to the dentist's office, go to the grocery store, but then the moment they decide to voluntarily go to church, then it acts up. That's not the way we see in the Bible. We do see one person who happens to be in the synagogue, but we don't know, we don't know what this person's um, state is. We have no idea. We don't get enough background but because the person is there, apparently the person has been acting this way because other times we see in the Bible that we get some indication as some, as to someone's activity. They have always been this way. The woman who was doubled over, she had always been doubled over. This young, this young boy who had been tossed in and out of the fire and the water, that was the pattern according to the father. And so we see demons acting this way all the time and other people seeing so. It's, demons don't go unnoticed. They're not in the habit of hiding. They don't mind Apparently, they don't seem to mind tormenting someone out in the public. The issue is, and what should have happened in a case like this, is when you come across somebody, just like Jesus did before, he asked the person if you are hurt, if you are sick, if you are struggling. The same word is also used in James about someone who is sick. Uh, do you want to be made whole? Do you want to be made well? And so the issue with someone that's acting up, maybe they're not demon-possessed, they have some sort, some sort of issues, and they want to be well. I've seen it done both ways. And so you ought to be able to 
to ascertain if this actually uh, is a demonic spirit present. But in this case, it was not, or at least it's not reminiscent of what we see in the Bible. This person is saying that he can resist, he can control it. Well, that's not what we see in the Bible also. And then again, you send this person back to his seat. Well, what should have happened was to ascertain, ask the person, do you want to be made well? There are some people that just don't want to be made well. And it might, again, it might not be a demon. We're in a fallen world and we're going to have all sorts of things happening with people. And that might be the case here. Throughout this whole thing, you see Geno Jennings saying that I bind you, Satan. I bind you, Lucifer. I bind you, devil. Well, the fact of the matter is we don't have the ability, the power to bind any demon. We can't bind or loose. What we do see, and I think when people get this wrong, is in Matthew uh, chapter 16. Let's look at this. He says, I also say to you that you are Peter, and upon this rock, which is a profession that he is to Christ, I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not overpower it. Look what he says. I give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth, um, shall have been bound in heaven. Now notice what it's saying in the tense of this word, shall have been bound. This is the perfect tense, uh, that a man on, which is, it's a perfect tense. It's something that's happened in the past. And so all Jesus is saying that you will have the ability to state what has been bound in heaven. It's not that you're going to cause something to be bound and then heaven is going to also acquiesce to your, your command. That's not how that works. It's that whatever you bind will have already been bound by heaven. In other words, you are giving the information to know. And in this case, it seems as though he's speaking only to the to the apostles, but let's just say it's for everyone. It's still not you that's doing so. It is the Lord that will do the binding. How do I know? Because even in, in Jude 9, but Michael, the archangel, when disputed with the devil and argued about the body of Moses, did not dare pronounce against him a railing judgment but said, the Lord rebuke you. So the rebuking and the binding comes from the Lord. And again, ultimately when Satan is going to be bound, is going to be when he does so for a thousand years. You can't do so. I can't know one. And so even with having a false diagnosis, uh, a mistreatment is just as bad. But what should we do? And this is the one thing that, you know, did kind of highlight, but that was, that should have been the uh, the focus, not just merely a highlight. James says this, he says in James 4, 7, he says, submit therefore to God, resist the devil and he will flee. And it's not just James that says that. Peter says the same thing. He first Peter 5, 8, he says, be of sober spirit, be on alert. Why? Because your adversary, the devil prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Look what you, Peter says. He says, but resist him firm in your faith. And so do just that. There are going to be tax all, all the time from maybe from demonic spirits, maybe from just people, maybe just from life, maybe from the weather, maybe from just what have you. Resist, stand firm in your faith. That's the key. Not to go and lay some, have someone lay hands on you to ta cast a demon out because if you're a believer, you don't have that in you. Greater is he that's in you than he is in the world. And so the reason why Gino could not cast a demon out, and again, I'll give him credit because he's not one of these guys that's always out trying to cast demons out. But even someone of legitimate intentions, even someone that's not trying to be a fake or a fraud or a phony can still succumb to this thought that a Christian can have a demon. And if you think that, then you're going to, you're going to, uh, with this improper diagnosis, give an improper solution. And in this case, thinking that there's a demon, you're casting a demon out when there's no demon there. And then two, because one, if there was a demon, he would have left. If there was a demon, he would have left. But then in this case, it's not a demon, it's just a person. Maybe he just got mental issues. Maybe the person not even not even saved. But the question is, does this person want to be whole? And so what does the Lord say? Resist him. And that should that's all that there simply is. No one can have the spirit of God in them and at the same time be tormented by a demon. Amen. Amen.